Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the LIC's Q1 FY25 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing the star then zero on a touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Siddharth Mohitni, CEO and MD, LIC. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good morning, everyone. I am Siddharth Mohanty, CEO and MD, LIC. On behalf of the senior management team, I warmly welcome you all to the results and performance update call of Life Insurance Corporation of India for first quarter ended June 30th, 2024. The results and a presentation can be accessed on our website and on websites of both the stock exchanges, BAC and MEC. Along with me on this call, I have managing directors, Mr. Satpal Bhannu and Mr. Durai Swami with me. Senior officials of the corporation present on this call are Mr. Dinesh Pant, appointed actuary and executive director, and Mr. K. R. Asok, executive director from the actuarial team. Mr. R. Sudhakar, executive director, marketing and CMO, and Mr. Hemant Booch, executive director, bank assurance from our marketing team. Mr. Ratnakar Patnaik, executive director, investment front office and CIO, and Mr. K. Ses Giridhar, Executive Director, Investment Back, Back Office from the Investment Team. Mrs. Monju Bagga, Executive Director, Pension and Group Schemes. Mrs. Rachna Khare, Executive Director, CRM Policy Servicing. Sri C. B. Ramana, Additional Executive Director, CRM Policy Servicing. Mr. Sanjay Bajaj, Head, Investor Relations. And Mr. Satmanyu Srivastav, Chief Finance and Accounts. I would like to thank all of you for sharing your valuable time to join this call today and listen to the LIC team. Let me now mention the key business, operational and financial highlights for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024. Premium income. For the quarter ended June 30th, 2024, we have reported a total premium income of INR 1,13,770 crore as compared to total premium income of INR 98,363 crore for the quarter ending June 30th, 2023, registering a growth of 15.66% on year-on-year -year basis. The individual new business premium income for quarter ended June 30th, 2024 is INR 11,892 crore, and for the corresponding quarter of last year, it was INR 10,462 crore. It can be seen that we have grown by 13.67% in individual new business premium income on year-on-year -year basis. Renewal premium income individual business for quarter ended June 30th, 2024 is INR 55,300 crore, as compared to INR, 52,311 crore for quarter ended June 30th, 2023. Therefore, for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024, our total individual premium income, including renewal, is INR 67,192 crore as compared to INR 62,773 crore for the quarter ended June 30th, 2023. The group business total premium income for quarter ended June 30th, 2024 is INR 46,578 crore, comprising new business premium of INR 45,570 crore. In comparison for quarter ended June 30th, 2023 last year, the group business total premium income was INR 35,590 crore and uh, comprised new business premium of INR 34,398 crore. Therefore, for quarter ended June 30th, 2024, 
the total group premium was increased by 30.87% as compared to similar period of the previous year. Our market share by first year premium income is 64.02% as per IRD figures for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024 as compared to 61.42% for the similar period ended June 30th, 2024. If we were to split this total market share of 64.02% into segment-wise share of individual and group business, we would have a market share of 39.27% in individual business and 76.59% in the group business for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024. On a comparable basis for the quarter ended June 30th, 2023, the respective market shares for individual and group business were 40.84% and 72.5%. At this stage, I would like to mention that for full year ended March 31st, 2024, our overall market share was 58.87%. Therefore, you can appreciate that we are making rapid strides in regaining market share now. In an AP basis, the breakup of business is as follows. Total annualized premium equivalent, APE, for quarter ended June 30th, 2024 is INR 11,560 crore, which is comprised individual AP of INR 6,747 crore and group AP of INR 4,813 crore. Therefore, on AP basis, the individual business accounts for 58.37% and group business accounts for 41.63%. Further, of the individual AP, the par business accounts for INR 5,132 crore and the non par amounts to INR 1,615 crore. As you can see, our non par share of individual APE is 23.94% and par is 76.06% for quarter ended June 30th, 2024. You will remember that our non-par share for quarter ended June 30th, 2023 on AP basis within the overall individual business was 10.22%. Thus, our individual non-par AP share has increased from INR 608 crore to INR 1,615 crore and from 10.22% to 23.94%. As a result of our intense focus on non par business, there is growth of 165.60% in individual non par APE on year on year basis, implying that the momentum we built on non par products is continuing. Profit after tax. The tax for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024 was 10,461 crore as compared to 9,544 crore for the quarter ended June 30th, 2023, an increase of 9.61%. VNV and VNV margin. Net VNV is INR 1,610 crore for the quarter ended. June 30th, 2024, as compared to INR 1,302 crore for the quarter ended June 30th, 2023. It can be seen that the VNB has registered an increase of 23.66% on year on year basis. Further, the net VNB margin for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024 is 13.9% as compared to 13.7% for the quarter ended June 30th, 2023, showing improvement by 20 basis points on a year-on-year -year basis. Solvency ratio. Solvency ratio as on 30th June 2024 improved to 1.99 as against 1.89 on June 30th, 2023. Assets under management. AUM as on June 30th, 2024 was INR 53,58,780.97 crores as compared to INR 
11,066.52 crore as on June 30th, 2023. Therefore, our AUM has shown a growth of 16.22% on year-on-year -year basis. <coughs> Product mix. We continue to focus on our strategy of increasing the proportion of the non-par business. We have modified two products, namely LIC's Jivan Akhe 7 and LIC's New Jivan Santi, and reintroduced during April-June 2024 quarter. While we are discussing the Q1 activities here, I am sure all of you have seen the recent product launch announcements from LIC during this week itself. It shall, we shall explain more about these launches during our subsequent result calls. Number of policies sold. During the quarter ended June 30th, 2024, we sold 35,65,519 new policies as compared to 32,16,301 new policies in quarter ended June 30th, 2023, registering a growth of 10.86% over the corresponding period of last year. Agency workforce. As on June 30th, 2024, the total number of agents was 14,24,847 as compared to 13,43,540 as on June 30th, 2023. The market share of number of agents as on June 30th, 2023, June 30th, 2024 stands at 48.64% as against 50.94% for June 30th, 2023. As already informed to you earlier, FY24 analyst call held on May 28th, 2024, we have started working on a project to transform our agency business to make it future ready and to be the best in class always. The project is called Jiban Samarth and we have onboarded global firm AT company to lead this project. On number of policies sold basis, the agency force sold 34,69,809 policies during the quarter ended June 30th, 2024, as compared to 31,19,611 policies during the corresponding period of last year registering an increase of 11.23%. It can be seen that approximately 97% of our policies in the quarter ended June 30th, 2024 were sold by our agency force. Even on premium basis, approximately 96% of new business premium came from our agency channel in the first quarter of current financial year. Contribution by banker and alternate channel. During the quarter ended June 30th, 2024, Banka and Alternate Channel collected new business premium aggregating 400.27 crore, which was INR C36.36 crore for the quarter ended June 30th, 2023, registering a growth of 22.27% on year on year basis. With this, the share of Banka and Alternate Channel by New Business Premium has increased to 3.46% for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024, as compared to 3.22% for similar period last year. Further, Banka and Alternate Channel sold 55,795 policies for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024, as against 62,970 policies for the quarter ended June 30th, 2023, registering decline of 11.39% on year-on-year -year basis. If we look at the contribution of a purely banker channel, it contributes approximately 70% of new business premium to banker and alternate channel. Our overall expense ratio for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024 was 11.87% as compared to 12.85% for the first quarter of last year. As you can see, there is a decrease of 98 basis points on year-on-year -on -year basis. 
persistency. On premium basis, the persistency per 13th, 25th, 37th, 49th, and 61st month up to the quarter ended June 30th, 2024 stands at 78 72.26%, 72.16%, 67.53%, 66.97%, and 61.62% respectively, as compared to 78.37%, and 62.73% respectively up to the quarter ended June 30th, 2023. On number of policies basis, the persistency for 13th, 25th, 37th, 49th and 61st month up to the quarter ended June 30th, 2024 stands at 67.81%, 59.24%, 54.73%, 54.08% and 49.39% respectively. As compared to 66.15%, 59.28%, 57.72%, 52 52.04%, and 50.79% respectively up to the quarter ended June 30th, 2023. Therefore, persistency has improved for 25th and 49th month on premium basis and on number of policy basis, it has improved for 13th and 49th month, year on year. Operational efficiency and digital progress. In our digital initiative through the agent assisted Ananda app, we have completed 2,49,643 policies through this app during the quarter ended June 30th, 2024, as compared to 2,22,000 167 policies for the corresponding period of previous year, thereby registering a growth of 12.36% on year-on-year basis. There is a growth of 88% in number of active agents in Ananda app for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024. Further, I am happy to mention that Ananda app has also been integrated with WhatsApp Claims. On the claims front during the quarter ended June 30th, 2024, we have processed 40,54,920 number of claims, which includes 38,68,253 maturity and survival benefit claims. On an amount basis during first quarter ended June 30th, 2024, Total maturity claims were INR 41,954 crore and total death claims were 5,467 crore. On a comparable basis for first quarter of last year ended June 30th, 2023, the maturity claims were 34,611 crore and death claims were 5,147 crore. Therefore, Death claims are higher by 6.22% and maturity claims are higher by 21.21% on a year-on-year -year basis. Hours and accolades. The list of hours owned during Q1 FY25 is presented on slide 58 of the results presentation, which indicates that our customer-centric efforts have been recognized by various industry platforms. Overall, I believe this has been a quarter where we have fired on all cylinders and delivered growth across parameters, and I believe we are on track to meet our objectives. Before I close my opening remarks, I would like to list down significant achievements during the quarter. There has been a sharp increase in our Q1 FY25 market share to 64.02% from 58.87% for full year ended March 31st, 2024. Also, first quarter of FY24, we had a market share of 61.42%.
second our overall ap growth is 21.28% on a year on year basis this represents a strong underlying growth in both individual and group business our non far share of individual business has further grown to 23.94% for q1 fy25 as compared to 10.22% of the same quarter previous year bnb has also increased by 23.66% on a year on year basis for this quarter bnb margin has shown as positive basis with positive bias with 20 basis points increase to 13.9% for Q1 FY 2025. While maintaining growth in all parameters, we have kept a focus on cost and uh, as you can see the overall expense ratio is down by 98 basis points to 11.87% in Q1 FY 25. Our agency is growing in numbers and now stands at 14.25 lakhs as at end of Q1 FY25, increasing by approximately 6% year on year. Now I would like to end by stating that LIC is progressing on its stated objectives of gaining market share after having focused on during the last year on consolidating changes in product mix, channel mix, and margin improvement. We are committed to further optimizing our product and channel mix and the improvement of margins. With the digital transformation exercise underway, we intend to create a seamless experience for our customers and partners. We thank our customers, shareholders, distribution partners, and employees whose continuous support allows us to create a superior sustainable value as we move to next stage of our journey. I now request the moderator of this call to open the floor for question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Avinash Singh from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. good morning. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. A uh, couple of questions. The first one is around uh, this new surrender regulation. I mean, so virtually this increases uh, the payout to the lapsing policy holder. Now, if we, I were to look at LIC's premium persistency drop at 13 months or uh, nearly 20, 22%. Now, in today's context, those uh, lapsing policy holder will be getting a zero. Now, going forward from October, they will have to be paid depending upon the formula calculated number. Now, that means that, okay, you will have to sort of a compensate uh, to those policy holder by sort of a cutting benefits on the position policy holder or tweaking your commission structure or taking a hit to the margins. So, can you just elaborate and help? I mean, what would be the strategy, how to compensate for the sort of at least this 13 month extra payout that comes under the new regulation. So how is that going to happen? That is my question number one. Second question is on the margin front. If I look, I am on, I can understand that, okay, the margin on the non-par side, uh, non-par individual side could be, uh, uh, you know, an outcome of an increased benefit payout due to maybe competition, increasing guarantee, increasing annuity rate. And also on the group side, it could be a mix of, uh, you know, factors, including how the composition is changing between group saving annuity and maybe per, uh, group term. Uh, that is right. But a big puzzle that, okay, how is that margin is seeing such a sharp drop on participating side, uh, particularly because now even in the profit sharing and all, uh, you know, you are nearly 90, 10 and all. So what is driving this kind of a margin drop in the 
uh, you know power saving side because your scale is too too big so uh, you know what is happening here on the uh, you know uh, individual participant side that is driving your margin so low Ladies and gentlemen, we have lost the connection for the management line. Please stay connected while we reconnect them back. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, the management line has been reconnected back with us. Uh, Mr. Avinash, please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so I believe the two questions. The first one was on how are you sort of uh, going to respond to this new surrender regulation when you will have to sort of uh, at least if I look like the 20-22% of the lapse in premium at the 30th, 13th month. Today you are, I mean, based on regulation, you are not paying anything. Uh, now, uh, going forward, and of course, I mean, this uh, uh, surrender money was anyway going to the largely to the power pool. So going forward, I mean, the impact has to be felt by the position policy holders, uh, you know, uh, the distributor in terms of commission tweaking and also some bit of the margin. So how are you sort of foreseeing, uh, you know, this impact of now the new surrender regulation with the the uh, lapsing surrender uh, sorry, uh, policy holder being paid is going to play out across these three stakeholders. So that was my question number one. And second was that, okay, on the margins, I understand that okay, on the group side, there are so many things that play out, even the kind of uh, annuity rates you offer, even within group, the kind of a product changes that happen. So that margin uh, change, uh, why you are understood, so is on the group non-par side, I mean, because of the change in guarantees and maybe ULIP increasing, having lower margin, those partly understood. But at your scale and uh, this thing, I mean, what is uh, driving down this par margin YOI? I mean, that's the material drop and you have a bigger scale. And I mean, uh, so, I mean, what is happening on the individual par side margin? Uh, yeah, uh, I will repeat what you had mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, as far as, uh, so, uh, as far as the surrender value uh, portion is concerned, uh, we all appreciate that here. Uh, uh, this entire uh, the focus is now about how to strike the right balance uh, for the people who are exiting policy during the term of it and for the company policy holders. That's why we'll all appreciate that there has been a very long uh, engagement uh, within the industry and also with the authority on the matter that what would be the right approach. Uh, we appreciate uh, the uh, regulations which clearly spell out the principles uh, which are laid down there. And we also note the, uh, the master regular which has come about. As we uh, intend to implement those few factors we need to consider is that first of all, as far as the uh, first year last session is considered, uh, the requirement to pay in the first year for all policies only applicable uh, when the term is up to five years. For the policies beyond the five years term, uh, the requirement is that first year full year premium should have been paid. So when we consider 30 month persistency, uh, the number which comes in the numerator is not inclusive of, inclusive of all the policies which have actually paid for the full year. There could be policies which have paid only for a month, uh, which have paid for a quarter or half year, and may still not be eligible for central value tax. So to that extent, uh, the impact gets mitigated uh, in, uh, in uh, that session. But that's not our you know, aim. Uh, what we are looking forward is as an institutional company, we continue to intend to provide uh, you know, uh, the, the services and the manner so that our policies continue to remain persistent and not first year, second year, third year. That's what we are engaged, still engaged, industry is also engaged in how to ensure smooth implementation and orderly implementation so that uh, we can strike the right balance for the continuing policy holders uh, and all the stakeholders vis a vis and, uh, you know, uh, the people who are surrendering uh, their policies for whatever reason during the term of the policy. And yes, as you rightly mentioned, there could be many uh, alternates uh, uh, to whatever is the final form of implementation, uh, which we will consider different uh, solutions, including the review on ticket size, uh, the mode of payment, uh, the structure, the design, uh, which can also include the uh, review uh, of the you know, uh, cost, uh, including distribution cost. But we try to strike a balance. Uh, we have to be cognizant about the interest of all the people who are involved, including our distributors, and we try to do it in a manner so that uh, uh, any uh, adverse impact is minimized to the extent possible. Uh, we continue to seek uh, more clarity and more, you know, uh, ways for effective implementation for the regulations also, so that we give our approach uh, uh, when we consider these things. Uh, second aspect of which you talk about on the VNB margins, as you rightly mentioned, uh, VNB margin uh, is uh, dependent on the business mix uh, of the company. Uh, it also depends upon the, the marketing strategy of the company, overall company, because 
uh, VNB margin is really significant uh, parameter from shareholder reporting point of view, uh, but more significant uh, <laughs> is VNB as a value because there's a value which is coming, which is therefore the combination of uh, uh, the business mix and uh, the margins there. So sometimes we do take strategic decisions to uh, bring down the margin uh, so that the VNB growth can happen, which we have seen actually that's one of the reasons that if you see in the first quarter, uh, we have been able to achieve uh, good uh, not only AP growth, but also VNB growth of something around 24%, which was just around 5% in the last year because we took a calculated you know, decision uh, uh, in which uh, the, the benefits were readjusted. In specific to the power segment which you are talking about, uh, Par is also a big, uh, has got a big bandwidth of products, large number of products. Within them, the margins are different uh, and significant. So there also, uh, business mix is one of the, uh, the things which uh, uh, drives uh, the, the value of PNB margin uh, within it. But another important component is uh, risk-free rates or the discounting rates that are used uh, for, the, uh, for the valuation of PNB margins and PNB as such. And we have seen uh, the southward trend in the RFRs in this, during this period, uh, which has also significantly impacted uh, the VNB margins in the uh, participating kind of business, uh, specifically which you have. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thanks, sir. Uh, so, so, quick follow up on that uh, first surrender uh, regulation. So, very specific. Now, will it be possible because you have a large agency distribution, there is the first year's commission, will it uh, remain viable? or to not have a clawback or a trail-based commission for the policies that if likely lapse stay in 13 months specific. So, I mean, under the new surrender regulation, will it remain viable that you still have the usual payout structure that you are doing today uh, if the policy were to lapse, say, in 13 months after paying one-year premium? Since the regulation, and if we read the regulations clearly, uh, I don't think we are insured that we have got challenges. Uh, the bigger challenge is possibly is from some provision uh, uh, in the uh, uh, draft circular, not uh, not draft circular, but the uh, master circular. So uh, regulations uh, are consistent with the pricing rate, so that's not a big point. Uh, will it be possible? Uh, this world is full of possibilities. Many solutions are possible. Uh, clawback is one of them, but it's not a necessary provision. Uh, we'll try to see ultimately the final shape in which we have to work out. We are in constant uh, interaction within our, uh, you know, our teams, uh, marketing teams, whenever product review or product redesign has to be considered. We have to consider all the aspects. Uh, so uh, everything is possible. Clawback is an option, but not a necessary option. At this stage, we'll not like to preempt and say uh, this is going to be uh, everything. Everything is possible. Like the review on the ticket size is possible, but every action has got an implication. So we have to see what is the best uh, possible combination of decisions uh, that we have to take uh, in product review. Uh, product review is anyway a very regular affair for us and is a continuous requirement for us. Whether product regulations uh, you know, are there or you know they are not changed, still uh, review will always be there. Uh, whether it's from the persistence point of view, we have to consider all these aspects. So yes, this is an option, but not a necessary uh, action that is uh, envisaged by. And so one data question, if you can help, uh, I would believe around 14 lakh crore would be your equity investment. How that is spread uh, across your par and non-par books? And what is the fair value gain sitting in these two books? See, uh, not talking about specific numbers, but as a, as a, as a, you know, as a conscious decision for the participating business, uh, we consider that, you know, uh, because it involves discretionary benefits, uh, we would, uh, you know, always be happy to have a uh, equity backing ratio of around 15 to 25 percent in that range, ideally around 20 percent plus uh, going forward. Uh, as far as non par business is considered, I'm talking about the uh, business which is for the uh, consideration of policy or this, uh, you know, um, uh, liabilities, uh, largely uh, because the guarantees are involved. And the guarantees being involved, uh, there is a requirement of asset liability matching to that extent. Uh, so a uh, very small portion of uh, equity backing is there. Uh, but in the, uh, our ASM fund has got a you know, substantial amount of uh, equity backing. So this is a mix in which so we consider uh, you know, uh, the nature of the business, uh, the requirement of maximizing and or rather optimizing the benefits for that class, and also ensuring ALM 
uh, in that context. So that is the, in principle, that is the approach which you are taking. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suresh Ganapati from Macquarie Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, sure. So I had a question on your, uh, again, margins. So, uh, you know, what do you, I mean, the fact that uh, we are giving increased benefit payouts uh, to the customer and it's a strategic decision that we have taken, perhaps that's what is causing a reduction in both par and non-par margins that you're talking about. And also we are looking at the surrender value regulation. So how do you look at the full year margins? You are around 16 to 17% for FI24. Um, I know there is a complex product mix aspect also. Would that also be, uh, considering that, do you think you can maintain margins on a full year basis? And also carrying on on Navinash's question on the equity book allocated. I mean, you are saying that the guaranteed products and non-power as a higher, uh, what do you call, government securities. But when I look at it as a part of your IPO document, you have allocated a massive 5 trillion rupees to your non-power book equity. You know, at the time of uh, IPO, out of 9.8 trillion. So I think right now, out of 14 trillion, it looks like even almost 50-60% of the book would be allocated to non-power if I look at your IPO document on an outstanding basis. Can you please provide a clarity on that? Thank you. Yeah, yeah see, uh, yeah, to the second part of the question, I think, uh, please note what I mentioned, I clearly mentioned that uh, for the participating business, uh, this is the equity banking ratio. What you, when you're talking about non-par book size, you're including uh, the, uh, the, uh, the assets allocated to ASM, Available Solvency Margin Fund, which is in our non-par fund. So there the allocation is there, uh, but the accretions from that fund is, uh, goes to the shareholder, uh, shareholder side. Uh, that's the allocation which you are seeing from the books that is in property. And, and that's why I play it that when I'm talking about your equity backing ratio, that is in context of the liabilities which are in the non-participating contract. So that is the uh, Okay, that's clear. That's clear. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And the first question? And the first question uh, was about surrender value. Uh, no, no, uh, overall margin outlook, sir. I mean, how do you look at the full year margin outlook versus last year? I'm aware that, you know, uh, some people have given their estimates uh, on this thing. We would like, not like to, you know, get into this. For example, let me say, uh, for example, even if we go by the question that the surrender value have to go up, uh, the actual uh, outcomes would depend on the customer behavior. Uh, does it necessarily mean that when the surrender value factors will go up, interest will also go up? It may happen, it may not happen. For example, strategically, an insurance company uh, may come up with the products with the high ticket size where the surrender behavior is less or with the different duration or different appeal to the customer. Uh, uh, so I, I personally feel it will be, you know, a sort of uh, uh, speculating without, because the customer behavior, uh, for this type of surrender, you know, factor is not available with us as at this point of time. And that will evolve. And I'm thinking that uh, there will be some, you know, uh, uh, continuous thinking about, uh, you know, uh, balancing uh, the benefits for the continuing policy order vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the withdrawing policy order. We still are, uh, you know, thinking that something uh, from here onwards uh, may change here because the regulation allows uh, for provisions for that thing. Uh, so if we consider the product as of today, and then they continue to be the case, then definitely center values have uh, this impact. But we all will appreciate that if these center values, uh, you know, have to be done or increased center values have to come into play, and uh, this will be a requirement for re review and redesign of these products uh, so that uh, that value can be protected. Now, that may have an impact on the business volumes. That may not have an impact on the business volume. That may create higher acceptability of products or lesser that only time can tell. So, you know, it's not something which is very static and uh, on those basis it can be projected what is the impact. Uh, uh, we are confident in that uh, insurance companies, together along with the authority, uh, will work out the ways and the revenue in which uh, the growth of the, uh, uh, the business will continue and the profitability and the margins and, uh, you know, to all the stakeholders will also continue to be reasonably good and fair. So uh, we will all will continue to strive in that direction. 
Okay, and just one final question on your strategy itself. I know it's a bit uh, complicated, but uh, the point here is you are bringing down your um, uh, power margin, non power as well as non power margins. More so on the non power margins. I was looking one Q F I twenty three was seventy two percent. One Q twenty four is forty three point three, and one Q twenty five is twenty nine point eight. So you have consistently brought down. The margins by a by a massive thirty percentage points over the course of last two years, just to push up the non-par growth. So, I mean, how long can this continue? I mean, the point here is, do you really want to prioritize growth over margins? How do you strike the right balance, especially when you are also going to see a regulatory change? Because it looks like growth is coming at the expense of margins. Hey, yeah, that's a uh, that's a very good question. Very good question also. But if you would see that uh, when we have brought down margins in some other products, we have also introduced products with you know uh, higher margins in between. Now the uh, and during this period, it's not that we have been continuously bringing down the margins. For example, for the annuities, uh, while in the last quarter uh, of the previous financial year we did bring down uh, our margins and increase annuity, we have reviewed and revised our rates uh, uh, in the current quarter. So it has to it has to be attuned to as we said our larger focus is to ensure that our VND growth VND by amount that is actual profit numbers are sustainable and upward looking and that all of us all anybody who understands and appreciates insurance business it is going to be a combination of the AP growth we can have very significant high margins and stay with it with the, but the business volume may not come about there so that it doesn't result to any VND as such. So therefore, it is going to be, and so what we are trying to do is, as on the competitive lines of business, wherever we have to, we have no option, but we have to make our products as competitive as anybody else is giving. So we, when we give it, we are simultaneously bringing out other products, and some of them have been blockbusters for us. Uh, introduce them uh, through better benefits, uh, the products which are value proposition for the customers, they are good for the shareholders. And they are good for even and our internal stakeholders. So those type of products also we have introduced. We continue to rebalance. And it, actually, this is something which should be noted that, despite of many, the challenges on the energy front for the industry itself, and, and large of it is also coming from the discount effects that we talked about. Uh, for LIC, uh, the quarter to quarter VNB margin uh, is better than the uh, last first part of the last year. And we have seen our trajectory changes from first quarter towards the fourth quarter. And that is what uh, directionally we are expecting and working for. Thank okay, you. thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Supratim Datta from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity. My first question is on your hedging strategy. So last quarter you had indicated that you are working towards putting up a hedging strategy for your non-power book. Just wanted an update on that. Where has that progressed and how far are you towards putting uh, up a hedging strategy for your non-power book? That would be the first one. The second one was on the VNB walk. You know, there has been a 230 basis point um, impact due to change in assumptions. Just wanted to understand what's contributing to that. Uh, what has moved uh, so so if you could help with that you know that's something that I would like to understand and lastly the last quarter you had mentioned that you were working towards um, the composite license and uh, what opportunities that could throw up if you could give us an update you know what you know what's happening with composite license how you know and what work have you done in the last three months uh, to make uh, you make use of it whenever it's available Thank you. I would answer the last question first regarding composite. Actually, we know that there will be some amendments so that composite license coming. For that, we have prepared, I have already given statement. We are now exploring all possibilities to have some stake in some standalone health insurance company. So that, because internally, we examined it is not uh, appropriate to develop our internal health insurance uh, vertical. So better to acquire some stake in some company. So that work is going on. I think uh, this year something will materialize. 
regarding uh, your heading strategy we have our derivative policy in place we have taken approval and uh, our team is working on that any further Yes, but, uh, yes uh, we have our uh, you know, uh, heading strategy in place. It is approved by the board investment policy. We have already tied up uh, uh, with our bankers on that thing. And as our uh, non-power portfolio increases, uh, we have actually started to work upon that already. Uh, besides that, in fact, uh, I'm also aware that within industry, uh, there is also a call whether uh, the direct participation of insurance companies uh, into this segment could also be considered, which is a very good idea. Uh, being thought about and probably at a thought stage. Uh, so we will remain open to uh, utilization of this uh, edging strategy. Uh, As regards uh, the uh, assumption, the impact of assumptions on VNP worker, the major impact uh, comes from the foreign RFR and uh, there is a minor uh, uh, actually additions to the assumption in the way of a better improvement in uh, Mortalities which uh, uh, we have observed in case of uh, term and uh, group businesses uh, has been uh, updated because uh, uh, the as per the standards we like to uh, factor in uh, whatever the information we have uh, to date basis and then uh, we have also observed uh, uh, observed that uh, there is uh, uh, an improvement in the uh, uh, withdrawal assumption in case of uh, Group that is towards the betterment. So these uh, uh, three uh, you know, are the most uh, uh, prominent uh, assumptions that we have made. And the major being the foreign RFR, which has impacted uh, the margins in a negative Got it. And uh, on the mortality experience being poor in term insurance, you know, what is that contributing to? Have you have you, you know, looked into that? Uh, you know, that would be one follow-up. And the, on the composite license, uh, you know, thanks a lot for the clarification. Uh, just wanted to understand that you're looking at taking a stake in one, you know, one of the sahis. All the sahis are privately held. So, you know, are you looking at, um, you know, acquiring something, or would it be a strategic stake? You know, what are your thoughts on that? If you could give us some clarity, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Actually, at this stage, we are exploring all possibilities, which will be in the best interest of LIC, all its stakeholders. That we are exploring, and when we finalize, you will also be able to know that. Sir, so your first question was not very clear, but there is some so, uh, yeah, sir, you had said that on mortality, the experience was poor in term insurance, which was both one of the contributors to the adverse assumption change. No, no, no. Actually, in case of term and group, uh, it is better. Okay. Uh, the, okay. The one, only, only impact, uh, negative impact is the falling out of part. The other okay. contributions are positive in nature. Okay, got it. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nishin Chawate from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my questions. Uh, you know, again, going back to the same point on, uh, you know, the margin change uh, in the book. So what I understand is that the change that we can see on the par side uh, was not because of benefit enhancement. So I think in your in your in your in your BNB walk, you have sort of cited two reasons. Uh, uh, you know, for 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 change in in in, in margins, one is uh, you know impact of product benefits, and the other is impact of assumptions. And uh, I think what 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 you seem to be now saying is that uh, the uh, par book is affected purely by impact of assumptions. Is it? See, that's impacts on par book. One is uh, the uh, multiple price in the par book, uh, which each has a different profit signature. And uh, then the business of mix within the part group is also impacting uh, to some extent uh, the margins of part. And uh, most important contribution to uh, the movement in the part, we observe in the movement in the part book is uh, due to the policy. I think we lost him, right? Well, I, I'll repeat once again. See, yeah. part book consists of. Uh, different products uh, with the uh, different uh, profit signatures and the business mix also contributes to the movement of uh, that we observe in the par business and more importantly the, uh, in the introspect of uh, par business the impact of RFR fall 
is performed. Okay. So because if I look at it, you know, now this year onwards, you have almost 10% sort of a, uh, you know, economic share. Uh, I mean, shareholders have almost a 10% economic share in the power book. And, uh, you know, if we had kind of sustained it at 5%, you know, what we had during IPO, you probably margins would have been around 4%. So, you know, does RFR have so much of an impact? Uh, I think it's what uh, my question is. And, uh, uh, you know, kind, kind of coming back to the broader question on margins, I understand that, uh, you know, at this stage, it's a little challenging to uh, sort of give an outlook on margins. Uh, obviously, a product mix shift is uh, definitely helping you. But uh, at, a, at a product level for par or non-par, is there a particular threshold margin? below which you would probably not want to go and then say, or, or probably on a risk adjusted basis, it, it doesn't make sense. And uh, you would then say that, look, beyond this, you know, all of it is something that we'll pass on to our, either our customers or distributors. So if you could give us something in your mind saying that, you know, we can't go below a particular percentage, whether it's a five or a seven or whatever. And, uh, you know, beyond that, we will pass on. Hey, uh, I'm just clarifying on that issue. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's pretty good in the prices for business. Uh, you know, I far as basically get that is a significant aspect. But we also need to appreciate that nature of products which are between participating and non-participating are differentiated, but at times very similar also. And within the participating book, there could be products again within the part of the book book size as explained my first response. Uh, and the really margins within the products could also significantly change. So if we have got this product uh, which becomes a very blockbuster or very you know attractive and you know taken with open arms in the non part side and you got a similar product in non uh, part getting book size and uh, there is going to be trade off and so for a short period of time uh, that will impact so the business mix, mix uh, uh, is bound to change when you are taking a strategy towards a particular line of business and that is something possibly which can't be seen on quarter to quarter basis it has to be allowed to settle down over a period of time and then see. As far as your uh, point about benchmarking or referencing, I think I indicated my earlier response also. Uh, what we are looking towards is a, a, a very you know, robust and sustainable growth in VN. So we are, I think we have to work on an overall strategy of business mix, uh, business volumes, and beauty margin. As a reference point, definitely another indication if you have seen some of our results uh, in the past that we have always referenced and benchmarked to the corresponding period of the previous uh, period and try to go upwards from there. So the strategy is uh, to gradually move upwards in this business margin overall. Last, if you see the first year, it was around 15.2. We moved to 16.8 at the end of the year. And that is the direction in which we are moving uh, towards, uh, you know, possibly 20% plus uh, in near to middle term. And uh, of course, during that period, uh, because the numbers on the margins only come after the quarter is over or the period is over. So to what extent that strategy of mix and will the margin change or sacrifice or in fact, you know, not allowing it to be sacrificed has worked out is seen at the end of the quarter and recalibrated for the next quarter. But the direction is that we are going consistently towards upward trajectory uh, to be in line uh, with the uh, industry. We are seen in the industry also. Uh, there are uh, some, uh, some, you know, uh, there have been achievements of high 20s or even 30s, and they have settled down. Uh, some uh, come, comes down. So there, there will be always a shift in the what is the industry level in the market. But we are very again confident that over some period of time, uh, our business mix, uh, as it is changing and changing very sharply, actually in the right direction, uh, will be uh, the standard benchmark for the entire industry rules. Uh, got it. Just one small uh, question, and maybe, uh, you know, this is probably a suggestion, is that if you could break up your equity book, uh, you know, between uh, basically your investment book between equity and debt, and again, uh, you know, that breaking up into par and non-par, because I believe last year you had made some transfers, uh, you know, for equity, you know, from the non-par, as in basically the, the equity share in the par book had gone up. So, you know, when we try to kind of collaborate, uh, you know, the, the market value of LIC's investment, it just helps us to understand how the allocations are happening. So maybe if you could either share a number or maybe, you know, subsequently kind of put it in your quarterly presentations. Sure, sure. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Prayesh Jain from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry to harp on this uh, VNB thing again. Uh, so, you know, we uh, on the part side, have we moved from 7.5% sharing to 10% sharing? And you've been alluding to the fact that, you know, the mix uh, has been adverse in the part side, uh, which has kind of dented the margins. Could you give some more granularity uh, as to, you know, what is the kind of mix that is impacting, uh, whether it's uh, the tenure of the products or it's the different nature of the products that kind of uh, impacting this? That would be my first question. I'll ask the other questions later. See, uh, if we look at uh, the bar products, uh, the, there are different types of uh, products which cater to different customers. Uh, and uh, we have uh, observed that uh, the customer, the product, uh, the customer profile, that is the uh, distribution of term as well as the distribution of uh, the ticket size that change. And that is the contribution uh, that, has the, uh, that has contributed to the uh, impact of the margins. Okay, and I had, we have moved to 10% so sharing, right? Yeah, yeah, in spite of me, because the RFR impact as we have, the RFR impact is more profound. Okay. Uh, Admittedly, is a long term, and therefore the uh, impact on uh, interest rates. Yeah. Uh, the, the the other question is you alluded to on the surrender charges you were mentioned that you know uh, the more than uh, if the premium is not paid for more than one year then only the, uh, then the surrender charges impact would not be there in the first year. Could you give some persistency color on uh, that particular cohort where you know the premium has been paid for more than one year? What is the kind of persistency for you guys in the 13 month for that uh, for that kind of a cohort? I think that you know we will appreciate one thing that you know by uh, by oral analysis that yearly policies tend to uh, lapse the least the highest persistency or lapsation sorry happens in the policies where the ticket size is small and the mold is either particular that has been the trend uh, so, so but again we can't speculate based on that because if the benefits change. Uh, people may tend to change uh, their uh, you know, the preferences also. Custom behavior will change. That's what I was indicating. And mm -hmm. uh, how it pans out, uh, how the customer behavior changes, just because the center will affect uh, the customer will anyway lose some part of his you know investment. It's not that he's gaining out of it. So it does not necessarily mean it will translate into higher surrender. Uh, so all the sectors will have to be considered. If we can uh, you know, tailor our products or make them more uh, distributed behavior and all those things can be linked together, insurance company can work out design. Uh, but yes, it, it, it has got an impact. It has got a financial impact on the, on the way uh, we have the products right now. Uh, it's a challenging work that we have to uh, take care of. Uh, but we cannot uh, say, uh, for example, this five-year thing, we hardly have any product where less than five year time is available. So that's not going to impact us for that for sure or something. Mm -hmm. uh, just because one year is going to pay, uh, you know, uh, tender values, we are not going to discourage people for taking yearly mode. That's also for sure. We work mm -hmm. out and uh, we are, we'll discuss out uh, those things and uh, we'll try to look into our product design accordingly and engage in the discussions wherever they are required and where they are fruitful to find the right way for us. Got that. And secondly, you know, there has been a recent uh, push towards ULIPS. Uh, how do you see that kind of scaling up? And uh, if I have, whether I've heard it correctly, that your medium term uh, target for BNB margins is 20%. Uh, you know, with the with this kind of, uh, so do you think that can be achievable with your focus, increasing focus on ULIPS and uh, those products? We mentioned about 20% plus. Just to clarify, so 20%. Okay. Not as a number, but 20% plus is as a way in which thinking. Unit has got an importance in the portfolio, not necessarily from the, uh, you know, margin uh, point of view. I appreciate that point. Unit has got distinct advantages uh, in the current setup of team, and therefore uh, insurance would tend to. We also, as I said, because it's a customer preference which is very important. If customers have got that appetite, even the margins are low because that cannot be the only criteria that because margin is low and customer need is there, we will not fulfill it. 
So at times, uh, it's not only the decisions to provide which product or which direction is not necessarily constrained or bound by margins only. So that is, let's be uh, clear on that. However, uh, for the top line, uh, for, for satisfying customer, for the, you know, larger, uh, I should say, leveraging those products for satisfying more customer needs, uh, units are going to be important. Uh, so so there's, there's a directional uh, uh, you know, uh, way in which we are going towards it. But uh, we are also focusing our big margin is coming from number saving products. Uh, so that continues to be uh, our uh, main focus. Got that. Thank Therefore, you. In the growth in saving non-power is even much higher than uh, the ULIP in our case. ULIP is around 134% in this quarter, whereas we are almost 600% growth in our non-power saving, resulting in overall around 160% plus uh, growth uh, in our non-power, uh, you know, non-link products. So that, that's, that, that's the direction in which we are. Got that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanket Goda from Avendish Park. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, uh, my question is pretty simple. Um, uh, assuming uh, the surrender rules are implemented on the uh, current product structure, um, uh, means, uh, means if you don't do any tweaking, what is the likely impact on the margins? Uh, means, means just, just uh, how much you need to adjust to, to, to protect the margin is, is, is the reason I'm asking that question. Uh, assuming central Pariva, uh, what is the likely impact on the margin? That's, that's my first question. Uh, the second thing is that uh, 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 your drop-off rates assumed to be 20-22 percentage at the 13th month. Uh, you, you also said that there are some policies which are quarterly, half yearly, and, and they are part of the 22 percentage. So if you can break out, uh, break up that premium uh, uh, of 20-22 percentage, uh, which is dropping off how much is less than one year uh, 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 premium pay, uh, means, means the paying term is uh, quarterly or, or high frequency compared to annual. Uh, that's my second question. And lastly, uh, somewhere, somewhere the power business seems to be struggling to grow. Uh, any, anything to read between uh, uh, how, how uh, easy because you, you, you have increased focus on long power, so natural victim is a power, or, or, or you think someday this business will come back and, 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 and contribute to the growth? Yeah, those are your Yeah, yeah. See, uh, first of all, uh, at this stage, I would not like to assume anything. We are still, we are, uh, you know, perennial optimist. We, uh, we remain optimist uh, that, you know, something better will come about. So uh, I don't see any reason uh, to assess. Uh, uh, in fact, we have assessed, uh, uh, but it's not, it's not about VNB margin. Let's be clear. It's, uh, the surrender value is not an issue about only VNB margins per se. It is about you know the best value position from the customer. That's how we look into it. Uh, as I said earlier, also uh, margins. Uh, uh, let's be very you know clear about it. Margin is something which can any product design just design a product. It can have margins. So that cannot be the ultimate focus. The focus is what how that margin leads into the business growth and industry growth and for us uh, as the company grows. So that the maybe is achieved. So at point of time, you know, twenty percent. Or 25% of 100% is not that significant, but what is the ultimate value which is coming in terms of the business growth uh, and uh, the margins? That's going to be the consideration, uh, and that is the direction in which we are working. This is the second part of the question. Yeah, see, again, we need to appreciate something that uh, it has been a big cost of our life uh, uh, to move away, uh, not actually move away, but to rather. See, let's see, it is. it's not that we are moving away from participating business. And mm -hmm. we have to work at a client, uh, at a point of time, they will decide what type of product they want to do. So that's a function of their needs. For example, let's talk about ULIP. ULIP is driven by, you know, what market sentiments and what market understanding customers have. So it is not necessarily insurance companies pushing. At times, it is sought by the customer. That's why it is done. Same customer, suppose you come out with a new product. As a strategy, we felt that, we have got good number of enough number of products in participating, and in case it grow, we can come out with more guaranteed type of product which the customer needs. Uh, so it's not only from business proposition or uh, margin point of view. We consider it's a value proposition, uh, good for the customer point of view and for the uh, for us uh, as the insurer also. That's why we come out with more offerings. So it is possible that at the time, uh, and the customer, every customer would have a budget of his own, and that's how much they can spare in a particular year. 
So possibly if the larger spend or larger you know investment is or larger preference is happening for non pass product, the same customer at that point of time may not be able to afford or buy a similar pass product. So these functions uh, you know or the outcomes uh, cannot be seen in a short period of time. So it's not that we want to reduce pass business and grow into non pass business. Our ultimate aim is that we want to offer all the product solutions to the customer. And tell them the value, the guarantees, as well as the, uh, the the choices for the discretion, and they are doing it. But as a corporation, as a co uh, corporation, uh, we have realized that we have been in power business for long, and there was a effect of saturation in that market. We do not see substantial growth at this point of time in power business, but we still expect, and we are working towards reasonable growth in participating business also. In fact, in the recent quarter, we have seen. Uh, uptick in our participating sales also and the volumes also as compared to the trends which were there in the previous year. So as a company, uh, the direction from COMD is continuously that what we have to offer is the value provision for the customer and that is what is happening. The great growth which is coming uh, in the non-party segment is the outcome of the number of products they vary, which have been appreciated by the market that we have been able to offer. An area which has been largely untapped uh, uh, from the point of the distributor, the policy orders which have been there. So that is happening. And possibly there is a dent of, uh, out, uh, as an outcome of that in the participating business. It's not a conscious strategy to reduce our business. We want to improve our book size uh, on both the sides. But we realize exceptional growth can come from non part at this point of time uh, uh, as compared to the participating business. Got it. So, so the second question which I asked, uh, basically out of the 20-22% drop off which we experienced after uh, 12 months or 13 months, uh, uh, how much is, is, is less than one year uh, premium paying plan? Uh, because, because that naturally will not be part of your surrender rules. So, so you'll benefit out of it. So, so this is just wondering uh, whether we can assume it is 50% or less than 50% of the drop off what you experience in 13 months? See, what will happen, uh, you know, uh, why, you know, uh, I don't see, as I was explaining earlier, I won't see much, uh, you know, uh, the purpose in examining the current portfolio. If that mm -hmm. is something to be done, we will redesign our products to ensure that they are in line with what we want them to, right? So I'm not bound by offering the same thing which I'm offering currently. So I have to first decide if this is the direction, these are the decisions which are going to make. And uh, we'll make decisions in a way to protect them. Of course, that can have business implications because suppose we increase the ticket size or we take decisions. Uh, that can help uh, persistency, but then we have to see whether it has got a, it will lead to any better, uh, you know, outcomes or that will challenge. That's an area which will, that's a reason we'll appreciate that this long discussion and protected discussion has happened on this concept, whether it is immediate uh, thing is good or it is to be a gradual approach which will work out. But uh, we, we, we have to comply with whatever is the expectations the regulators. Uh, we only have the right to discuss and present our case before them and ultimately we'll do uh, what is required and comply with those things and take a design uh, review uh, to ensure that customers continue to play as best as possible, distributors continue to get uh, you know benefits which are as best as possible and uh, shareholders' uh, interests were uh, being involved into the business are also fully protected in line with the expectation that we create for it. Got it, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's it so much. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Jain from ICICI Prudential Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> I said thank you for the opportunity. Just two questions from my side. One is on the new launches, sir. So, the Jeevan Utsav product that we launched has really helped us uh, ramp up the non-par uh, AP side of it. So, uh, uh, are there any new launches that you are working on, either on the non-par or anything on the NVT or uh, say protection ULIP? So, if you can help us understand what kind of new launches are you thinking on? And second is on the distribution side, sir. If there are any steps, uh, I can see there is some increase in the bank AP and the direct AP also. So if you can help us understand what are the strategies that uh, we are taking on the distribution side uh, to increase the more mix coming from uh, these other channels also. Thank you. You see, recently we have launched uh, two very innovative uh, term products, uh, Uba Term and Uba Credit Lightweight. 
and already we are getting very good response, uh, getting traction in this market. And in coming days also we will be launching some more products uh, depending upon whatever feedback we get from our customers as well as from our field force. It is a continuous process as our appointed actually told. It is launching depending upon market need and uh, other things also. We will be imagine all those things, uh, keeping those things in mind we will be continuously launching innovative products. So that is one thing. Second question was marketing. marketing strategy. You see, our bank has already improved. Focus will be on alternate channel and digital marketing also without compromising agency channel. Agency channel will grow, but the share of other channel we plan systematically it has to grow up. And already bank has shown in last quarter Q1, they have shown uh, we are more focusing on alternate channel, apart from bank, alternate channel means uh, broker, IMF, corporate agents, those will be focused area in the current year. Got it, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tipanjan Ghosh from City Group. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. So just one question from my side. You know, when I look at your persistency ratio trajectory between Q1 of last year versus Q1 of this year uh, and the decline in some of the buckets, uh, especially the early ones, wanted to understand if you can give broad color on the product categories which, are, which have witnessed a decline or is it across the board that you have witnessed uh, a deteriorating persistency trend? Also, uh, you know, if you can break it up between, uh, you know, some of the customer cohorts in terms of uh, high ticket versus low ticket. Um, yeah, so the, and that would be my question. Yeah. Yeah, as far as this, you know, 13 month persistence is concerned, uh, uh, concerned uh, I think on the policy basis, it has improved as compared to the last year. So on premium basis, it is there. Uh, but the changes are very, you know, small. The difference is, uh, you know, uh, the, because we have taken certain decisions uh, in the previous years uh, in which we have reviewed uh, various products uh, where, the, where the persistency experience was not good. Uh, particularly in the micro side, uh, so possibly there is a shift uh, from those businesses to some other lines of businesses. Uh, but as far as policy is considered, in the policy that uh, 13 month persistency is actually by policy this is improved. So uh, from 66.15 percent to 67.81 percent. So that's the case. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and these are the cohorts, you know, which are. Uh, uh, over previous period of time. And another important aspect of persistency which needs to be noted is that for the corporation, uh, we have a very, you know, a very, very different role from many other uh, possibly uh, uh, because of the, 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 the we have a six-year decade and we have always been trying to balance uh, between ensuring just the number of persistency and also making our availability, you know, this insurance for all concepts reaching to every nook and corner. So persistency can be possibly significantly improved if the ticket sizes are increased. But then there's a, there's a, there's a deprivation to the large segment of society uh, which can afford, uh, you know, lesser amounts. So they have to be given uh, smaller ticket size also. Uh, but by the nature, and uh, uh, we have seen that in the lower ticket size, the persistency experience is uh, less uh, because of the affordability is issue. So, uh, you know, in case a certain percentage is lapsing, uh, that's one way of looking at it in that segment. But a certain segment which can afford and continues with that policy, if we do not provide them those ticket sizes, uh, then possibly they will cannot, never benefit from the uh, benefit of the insurance. So that is some call which uh, is very critical and important for us. And uh, these persistency ratios, uh, again, line by our business wise are different. Uh, we also show very high persistency in term business and all those things. But this is largely coming from small ticket size policy is their contribution. And we continue to review. We have reviewed a lot of products in their direction. Uh, but that has also impacted the business volumes also. So uh, we, we, we have to uh, look into that aspect. And the persistency, uh, we are closely monitoring, doing all the efforts in that direction. And in fact, trying to incentivize the behavior of distribution also, uh, as well as the, in the product designs, we have tried certain experiments. At times, it takes little time for them to get implemented because the numbers uh, other than 13 months are the ones which have been done in the previous period. Uh, another
other important aspect is that this way of persistency calculation, as seen from public disclosures, and uh, some uh, some of the uh, uh, companies may not be including micro business into it. We do include micro business into our persistency calculation. That may have smaller impact, but and never this, that has got an impact. So uh, 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 we have therefore had to review our micro insurance product. Uh, that's what we we'll continue to do. Uh, we realize the importance of persistency, and that remains a focal area for the corporation. Sorry, but just to follow up, so, uh, you know, would you like to give some color between ULIP, uh, PAR, and non-PAR savings in terms of how the persistency trends have been? I mean, excluding the ticket size and the customer cohort, in terms of the product category, which class uh, has witnessed uh, pressure? See, overall, the experience, if I would say by it, uh, non-PAR saving would give the uh, best persistency to us. In that, also, the term business would give the best persistency. Uh, followed by non-pass saving products. Uh, of course, the annuities uh, give good persistency there also. Uh, then the comes uh, participating business has got lesser persistency as compared to that, mainly because of the ticket sizes again being less available in various products there historically also. And ULIPs also uh, 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 show lesser persistency, but within ULIPs, some of the products have shown, the new products have shown very good persistency. The old products uh, that we had, uh, uh, their persistence is new. So within ULIP also, uh, the, uh, the, the trend is different across different products. So that's why we are having a close look into which products to continue, which products to now redesign, and uh, which okay. to phase out. But would it, would it be fair to assume that on a YOI basis, PAR has witnessed some pressure? For the small ticket PAR? PAR has, I think uh, 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 the 13-month PAR has uh, witnessed some uh, declining trajectory? You are talking in context of persistency? Yes, yes. Yeah, some of the products within them par which have got lower ticket size, uh, their persistency seems to have dipped. Therefore, we'll have to we'll, uh, review those products. Got it. Uh, thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today's conference call. I would like to hand the conference over to Mr. Mantni for their closing comments. So thank you, friends. Uh, thank you for uh, recently listening and uh, for your very, very thoughtful questions. And we hope that uh, we have been able to answer all your queries to your satisfaction. Given the momentum in our business and rollout of various strategic initiatives, we are hopeful and confident that we'll be able to demonstrate all-round growth and improvement in parameters as we move forward. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Thank you. On behalf of LIC, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.